Hello and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson we are going to talk about diffuse and specular lighting effects in Inkscape. These effects can be used to simulate lighting on our objects. But before we get started I'm going to give some background information about lighting in general. One of the effect one of the ways in which lighting affects what I see we see depends largely upon whether the object is diffuse or specular or a combination of the two. So what's the difference between the two? Diffuse light, uh, when an object reflects light in a diffuse way, it reflects light in all directions and we get a very matte effect. When objects reflect light in a specular way, it reflects light in a much more direct way. It's much more reflective and only a small part of what we see is reflected. So in short, diffuse <coughs> objects which we reflect light in a diffuse way are not very shiny but quite matte while objects which reflect light in a specular way are quite shiny, for example, like uh, aluminium or a bowling ball or whatever. Most objects have got reflect light both in a diffuse way and a specular way. So what you can do is you can sum the two results together to result in a combined effect. A little bit of diffuse lighting and a little bit of specular lighting. The second thing which affects how we see the objects is the source of the light. There are many types of light sources, but uh, we're going to discuss three of them which have been simulated in Inkscape which can be simulated in Inkscape. The first, and I think this will be the most common, is a distant light. Distant lights, think of for example the sun, it's light which is very far away. Uh, the r rays have a, the light rays have a single direction, they are parallel and they also have a constant intensity. If I walk towards the sun, it won't get any brighter unless I walk really far. But if I stay on the surface of the earth, it's not going to get any more or less bright, irrespective of how close I am to the sun. Then you also have a point light. Point lights, imagine, is a light bulb. The rays are in all directions and what's interesting is that the intensity of the light varies. If I am closer to the light bulb I receive more light than if I am far away from the light bulb. And finally we've got the spotlight. In the, the case of spotlights rays are directional like in a distant light but the intensity varies the light forms a kind of cone. Also, it's different from distant light because distant light will uh, illuminate everything, while a spotlight only illuminates a small area in the object. Now, let's get started with some Inkscape. In order to demonstrate the lighting, I'm going to draw a cone. A cone as seen from above. First, I'm going to draw a circle. Then I'm going to add a new filter named lighting. And I'm going to go to add effect diffuse lighting. Here we have a short text, a short text box. The diffuse lighting, blah, 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 
the input the inputs alpha channel is used to provide depth so in other words uh, we need a, an alpha channel the higher the opacity areas are raised towards the viewer and lower opacity areas recede away from the viewer so in a cone as seen from above we want the point to be right in the middle pointing towards us so we're going to make a gradient we're going to make a circular gradient and we're going to use the fill and stroke dialog to do that add a circular gradient let's edit it here we have uh, I'm just going to make the center part black to make it more clear the center part the most opaque area will be the peak and the least opaque area on the edges uh, will be the sides of the cone now let's go back to the filter editor and let's click on apply we see that the whole object is filled with a black square let's have a look at some of these parameters we have diffuse color this is the color of the light surface scale this is the extent to which the the opacity represents the height a constant is the strength of the light the intensity of the light kernel unit length it's not important right now and then we have a drop down box here and we can choose between distant light point light and spotlight for distant light we can choose between azimuth and elevation now let's increase the surface scale and increase the constant we have a lighting effect it seems that there is a light on the right side of our object but we also have an ugly interference pattern this is because there are limits in the resolution of the uh, alpha channel of the opacity map so in order to fix that we are going to add a small blur five percent blur should be enough now let's change the color of the lighting see what happens let's make it green and as we expect the light mm, the side of the cone which is colored which is lighted is colored in green here we have two parameters azimuth and elevation these are two angles which define the location of the light the azimuth is the angle here I will demonstrate by moving it as I change the angle we see that the location of the light changes and elevation is how high above the horizon the light is so if I right now it's at zero which means imagine that's the Sun the Sun would be exactly on the horizon but if I increase it just a little bit it will be just a little bit above the horizon and if I increase it up to 10 degrees it already fills the whole screen that's because I set the brightness of the light to very high but if I just give it a reasonable amount When I set it to 90 degrees, the lighting is coming from straight above. And when I set it to 180 degrees, the lighting is on the left side on the horizon. 
if I set it further than 180 degrees, the lighting is below the horizon and no light reaches the image. If we don't want to use a distant light, but we want to use a point light, we have to fill in the coordinates of the point light. These are the coordinates, the x position, the y position and the z position. The origin 0, 0, 0 actually corresponds to the top left of the A4 sheet why it doesn't correspond to the bottom left to be uh, in line with this coordinate system that I do not know but suffice it to say that it that we have to specify the coordinates relative to this corner so if I so now I have my light source here on the surface of the page the Z coordinate is the height and if it's uh, positive it's closer to us and if it's negative it's further away from us so let's put the height to 50 for example and we see that the point light is raised above the surface of the paper I can also change the y-axis the y-coordinate to uh, 500 for example and I see that my light source has moved downwards. I can also move it further to the left, for example, to negative 200. And we see that the light source has shifted to the left. Finally, we can also use a spotlight. A spotlight requires two coordinates the location 0, 0, 0 and the coordinate of a point which it's pointing at. So for example if I put the location at 0, 0 and give the height to be 50 and I want the spotlight to be pointed at the position uh, here that would be around 300 and also 300 then I see that the spotlight is pointed here let's say I want to change the cone angle of the spotlight now it's quite high it's on a hundred but if I set it to 40 30 less and less and less If, for example, I want my spotlight to be pointed straight down, then I set the location of the light to be exactly the same x to have exactly the same x and y coordinates as the location that it's pointed at. Only the z coordinate is different. So if I change the cone angle now, I see that I only get a circle and because of the height map I have some interference in my circle next let's add some specular lighting to our drawing let's go to add effect and choose specular lighting click on add effect let's move it up above Gaussian blur now we want an input for our specular lighting remember that we need an input with an alpha channel or where the alpha channel represents the height map of the object this is our source graphic at the moment we had the diffuse lighting as the input, the output for the diffuse lighting effect as the input, which is completely opaque. We want the source graphic as the input for the specular lighting. 
Now let's have a look at the parameters. We've got specular color, surface scale and constant. These parameters are the same as in diffuse lighting. The color of the light, the amplification of the height map and the strength of the light, the brightness of the light. I'm going to set my height to 5, the amplification of the height to 5. Then we have exponent. Exponent describes the extent to which the light is reflected in a specular way. If the exponent is set low, it's uh, the light is reflected in a more diffuse way and if the exponent is high the light is reflected in a more specular way so in other words the exponent determines how shiny the object is if it's the higher the exponent the more shiny the object excuse me the shinier the object kernel unit length is not implemented yet and then like with diffuse light we have distant light point light and spotlight to choose from let's choose distant light and let's change the color to make it a bit more easy to demonstrate what's going on to pink so remember the specular lighting is pink and Let's change the constant and the exponent. The exponent to 4 and the intensity of the light to 2. And now let's combine the specular lighting and the diffuse lighting. So don't forget that the diffuse lighting now has no output or the output is going nowhere it's just a specular lighting which is blurred and which results for which we see the result here we want to combine the output of the diffuse lighting with the output of the specular lighting so let's click on blend click on add effect and combine them rather like this we now have the specular light on top of the diffuse light and let's use the specular light to lighten the result let's decrease the strength of the specular light a little bit and let's move the azimuth angle to about a hundred and eighty degrees and here we can see specular light on the left side and diffuse light on the right side as I change the exponent, we see the effect it has on the filter or the intensity Thank you for watching, that was all for now I will see you in the next lesson, bye bye